dawn breaks on the Ganga at Varanasi, a time and a place infused with the energies of countless worshippers. Hindu pilgrims have come here for millennia, a place of faith and ritual for generations upon generations. Almost 2,500 years ago, a young Hindu prince also crossed these waters. But his reasons for coming were different. He was born as Siddharth Gautam, the prince of the Sakya clan. The world would know him as the Buddha, or the Awakened One. Seven weeks after he attained enlightenment, he came to a forest close to Varanasi. Here he delivered the first of his teachings to five of his followers. The sermon was called the Dharma Chakra Parvartana Sutra. A Sanskrit term signifying the setting in motion of the wheel of Dharma. It was the birth of Buddhism and its path to liberation from human suffering. It was a small beginning. The group, or Sangha, were the first of the monastic Buddhists. There were six of them now, and then that just grew into many more, and the Sangha still continues. It's a brotherhood and sisterhood of a community that wants to live an awakened life on a path of liberation. Sarnath, about 10 kilometers from Varanasi, is where the Buddha gave his first sermon. It is among the four most sacred sites, along with his birthplace, Lumbini, Bodh Gaya, where he attained enlightenment, and Kushinagar, where he died. Today, Sarnath contains the remains of structures thousands of years old. The most prominent is the Dhameka Stupa, once called the Dharma Chakra Stupa, First built by Emperor Ashoka about 2,300 years ago, then redone eight centuries later. Some believe it marks the spot where Buddha delivered his first sermon. The cylindrical tower is about 30 meters in diameter and 43 meters high. Stone carvings once covered its walls. What lay inside the tower is an enduring mystery. Some believe it contained a holy relic, perhaps Buddha's ashes, but there is no real evidence. It is from here that Buddhism spread to the world. In the centuries to come, the Buddha's words began to resonate across the subcontinent and beyond. In the 7th century, in the Chinese province of Chang'an, a young monk was among those deeply inspired. Xuanzang decided to leave China to study Buddhism in India, where it originated. It would be the beginning of a long journey into the unknown. But faith gave him courage. of his province in China had banned foreign travel, but Xuanzang was determined. In the dead of night, in the year 629, he began a very long walk. Carrying his belongings in an ancient backpack, Xuanzang set out on one of the greatest journeys recorded by any man. The young pioneer walked through some of the toughest terrain, recording what he encountered. The early part of his journey took him westward, towards Central Asia, 
through the dreaded Gobi Desert and then southwards towards India. By the time he crossed the high Pamir Mountains and reached India, he had been on the road for over a year and there was still more to go. Xuanzang eventually reached Sarnath. He is thought to have resided in the ruins of a temple called the Mulagandha Kuti, a place where the Buddha was believed to have once meditated. When Xuanzang comes to Sarnath, he sees at least 1,500 monks, a monastic university, there were mango groves, there was a whole atmosphere of study and practice. By now, he was fluent in Sanskrit and assimilated great knowledge of how Buddhism was practiced in India. But Xuanzang was more than a Buddhist monk. He was one of the first great travel writers of the world. He wrote of what he saw and experienced on his travels over 17 years. His accounts survive as the history of those times. Almost 1400 years after Xuanzang's epic walk, international travelers still come to Sarnath. They come to walk the hallowed ground where the wheel of dharma was set in motion. Today, 500 million people around the world follow Buddhism, a faith that began right here in Sarnath with the words of a prince who became a monk, who became the Awakened One.